Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office Teardown Lab. I have here a motorbike battery, and that's because clearly I own a motorbike, and clearly again it needs a battery. So that's that explained. But when you get batteries, it'll be interesting to show you because when you buy bat oh gosh, polystyrene batteries in the post, um, they often come interestingly packed. So I'm going to see if this one is interestingly packed because sometimes they come with the acid separate and the idea is that you mix the two. However, I don't know. This is looking like it's pretty much all in the same pack, worryingly. Oh wow, it's actually come totally good to go. Very odd. I'm kind of almost worried now because I normally use these sort of gel-like batteries which have a sort of matrix in there of fibre and uh, the idea is because in motorbikes they sit in weird angles like that you don't want them to leak out however it does have a picture of a motorbike on the cover so that's going to be good let's have a look there let's see what volts we're getting out of that so this would be a short video then wasn't it I was just going to show you how you <laughs> fill up the battery with acid 13 volt it's probably even good to go you know it'll probably just run at that dang dang guys you ruined my video well I can just describe the process anyway you'll get the battery and when you take the this little lid won't be on there it'll be half off or something you be a little bit off and then you'll have all the little cell holes and on the cell holes they'll have like little ends of syringe needles almost just plastic that's cut at an angle and then you get another thing in the uh, battery, which is the acid in the box. And it looks like a bunch of syringes all bolted together. So imagine loads of syringes or freeze pops that are all in a big row. And you basically turn them upside down. I'm not going to do it this because it's going to leak everywhere. And then, oh, here's an empty syringe. And then you just push it down. And then the battery actually perforates the material in the tubes. And they all just sort of drop their um, acid slowly into the matrix. And my idea was, was to do that and measure the voltage while that was happening just to see if the acid is literally as it's filling up and reacting with the different plates, which I don't know what they are, nickel and something else, lead, um, would show you the um, volts going up. But meh, alas, that is not going to be the case. Ho hum. And if, I always think, oh, there should be something interesting to talk to you about because there's so many interesting things around here. In fact, there's a lot of clutter. Should I show you this? There's something else I can show you. Um, this is that pocket memo I bought the other day. I think I've got a video out there already on it, and it does work. It's all, actually, it's weird. It was really like not working, and then the more I played with it, like playing with the switches, the more it started working better. So I guess it was all of just a case of needing to kind of get all the filth out of its system or something. Now, um, ooh, nice. So when I um, I tweeted online saying I need some tapes, I tweeted it to uh, Techmoan, and uh, in my haste I didn't wait for his reply, I just ordered some tapes, and I ordered these, and these are called micro cassettes, and it turns out they're the wrong size, they will just not fit, they look like they will fit, but they don't, I haven't even opened the pack because there's two sealed ones there that someone can have. Um, because apparently these use mini cassettes and when I went on eBay now mini cassettes are way harder to get than micro cassettes so that sucks so I haven't been uh, able to sort of try that out but it's, the tape is the same in all these bloody things I don't know why they were just so obsessed with trying to get you to buy their consumables clearly we can we know why they were trying to do that um, but it's just it's to the detriment of society so that, what else can we talk about here let's talk about this so this is a heater um, resistor that you will get in your car um, and there is a fascinating thing about this actually let's just do a little test here so basically it's a massive uh, set of resistive elements so you've got four contacts I'm guessing one's common let's see this is a dead one right so it might not quite do what we expect but let's see some of these will be common to each other so in continuity mode I'm not getting anything so I'm going to put it into resistance mode yes so 1.6 megs across those 2.83 megs it's all jumping around should be putting getting my hands off that it'll be measuring me probably 1.6 jumping around yeah <laughs> hopefully here it'll be zero yeah no hang on a minute 
So I want to show you this thing at the top is a thermal fuse. And it's the sort of thing that goes in toasters and coffee machines a lot. Interesting. So what you should be getting though is continuity like that through that and it's not. So that has actually blown. That has actually blown. So this thing must have got really hot. But that's what's bizarre about this. It was exhibiting a really odd behaviour. So what this was doing in the car was when you had it on like two and three, it didn't do anything. And then when you had it on four, it made everything go dim and the fans came on. But the fact that everything went dim showed this was drawing too much current. So this, though, is supposed to be your, your current limit here, isn't it? I mean, that's definitely supposed to be your current limit um, on account of it being a thermal fuse. So that blows. You can see that's going up through there. That should be going up through there, yeah. That's going up through there. So these two, 1.8 ohms between them, interestingly. Double check that. So these two are pretty much con connected. So you can imagine this when you're rotating the switch, it's putting this uh, either through this resistor or this or by whatever combination. I'm not going to draw out the circuit. Um, but you buy these for about three quid anyway, and you can just go underneath your car if it, this is from a, a Vauxhall. You can just dig around underneath the passenger uh, footwell and pop it out and swap it out of a new one, and it all works, all good. Now these things are interesting. It'd be nice to see if we can decapitate one of those because they work in a really cool way. So as I said, if you find uh, coffee machines and stuff that don't work, more often than not, it's this, and it, it, even the really expensive like. I've got like a, a machine that was probably about £1,200 coffee machine and again this is the fault, this is what uh, was wrong with it, which is literally a 30 pence piece. And what you've got inside, if we can just be very gentle, so you see there's a ceramic there, let's try to open this up kind of careful. We might be able to see what's happened you see if we can, in fact, is it ready to go? No, not yet. If we can crunch the end of that a little bit, that ceramic, I think we'll be good. Let's not do it with a sharp thing. Oop. Safety first, watch your eyes. Nom, 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 nom. Let's have another little wiggle. Not quite. You're not quite ready yet. He's not ready yet. So what should be in here basically is the equivalent of solder wire. In fact, look, there's more ceramic in there. I wonder if it's loaded with ceramic. Ah, but you can see it did pull out. Woohoo! Yeah, we're getting there. Clean that off. And you can see there's actually a nice little end on that thing. But it almost looks like it fits inside a cup. And yeah, there is a kind of cup. Oh, there it is. Let's dig in deeper. Digging deeper. Sorry, I can't zoom in any closer, but you'll see what's in here in a minute. Look, there you go. It's like a spring contact. And then in the other end is just a, a contact for that spring to meet up with. Yep, and there we are. So you can see in there there's a shiny metal diamondy thing. And then there's that spring in there. But you can see on this end there's that pin. So that pin though. That's not going to do any good, is it? That's not going to do any good. So all I can imagine is among all of this detritus somehow, somewhere, there's supposed to be a bit, something that's fusible, that sort of breaks the circuit. But I don't see a ball of solder or anything like that in this one. So you can imagine that's how it's gone together. So I wonder if it's just that spring, as if that was just a different shape originally and then once the heat got it, it sort of bent up a bit. So we could try applying some heat to it, see if it does anything. I mean, it might already be activated now, but let's hold it right there. We'll get put this here for some contrast. Let's put some heat on it. Okay, it's getting warm now. Didn't seem to do much, did it? Didn't 
didn't do much either. I'm really, I'm really confounded now. And the little spring has blown off the desk. So well, that's weird, really. That's not really what I expected in, in this. Um, I expected something a little bit more blobby, like a blob of goop to have a look. That's definitely in there. Just seeing if there's anything in the feature in here. Oh, but there's, oh hang on, we got another thing. We got another thing here. Oh, is it? Is it something to do with the spring holding that? Does that hold? And the spring really has gone tonto, unfortunately. I'm wondering now if this is obviously a spring-loaded piece. So this thing here, yeah. Think about it. This thing here makes contact with the side, right? So at the same time, it's probably potentially pushed up to this to make the circuit. But then when it heats up, this thing gives, and then the spring shunts it away. So it can no longer make the circuit. That, I think, is the, the key to this, this mystery here. So I would say, looking at the tubes, that's the tube. And then we have this contact here with this sort of plunger here, this pin, right? I reckon, and remember, this was all sort of packed with ceramic here, so that's just full of gunk. I'm wondering, you see, if that thing there, that star-shaped thing, grips the side like that, and there was the spring here inside. Now, I've kind of drawn it wrong, but imagine now this plunges longer and it starts off touching that thing. Yes, yeah, so that's making a circuit. But then if heat applies, that little star thing might lose its springiness, so it loses its bite. Thus the spring would extend and then push it down here and obviously breaking circuit by quite a large gap here. So if that is the case, it does mean potentially that this thing should react to heat in some interesting way. Um, so the one test is to try heating it as is, and gripping it tightly so it doesn't fly off like the spring did. And then if that doesn't work, bend it and then see if it goes back to its original shape on the application of heat. So let's have a go at that. We have heat. Okay, so nothing obvious when it was heated. Right, so what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna bend it slightly, because we all know what it looks like now. It's nice and even. I'm going to bend it in the way that it would be gripping, which is be flatter. I'm gonna try to make it flatter. Right, so it's nice and flat now. You see it's flattened out? Pretty flat looking. Ready? Totally failed. I don't bloody know. <laughs> I've been watching and being so very patient. Um, there's only one thing I can give you of satisfaction. I'm going to say that's a fail, by the way. Fail, science. Science, fail. Uh, I don't know why. There might have been some other key aspect to this. I might need to buy a fresh one and see what they're... Uh, and try to dismantle that. Booger. Booger. There's definitely still though an internal uh, ridge in that thing. It's definitely an internal ridge gripping something. Don't know. Maybe it's once, once bitten, twice shy. So I'm just going to leave you with one other thing that might satisfy you slightly. So here's science fail, and we're just going to go out at least with a bang. Thank you for watching. <laughs> So
So bizarrely, I've changed the battery and the bike still doesn't bloody work. Although there's a bit of oxidization on this, I'm not really convinced it's totally duff. So I'm, we're going to do an experiment. Um, it's not a very safe one. Don't try this at home. I've just got a bit of wire, basically. And um, curious to see. Seems to be reasonable current there. This thing is hot now. This wire is just insanely hot, right? So did you see that? It zapped it on there. The wire is insanely hot. In fact, it's obviously melted internally. Oh, there you go. Yeah, see that? It's melting the insulation. By the way, this is how car fires start. If you ever see a car on the side of the road, it's normally a short circuit in something like a bit of wire like this. And very easily it can happen. Um, however, to be fair, whoop, there you go, right? So that's that's what happens when it goes really instantly. So you can see the wire's just gone insanely red hot and it's just melted the insulation on the inside. So I don't know, this battery seems to be putting out a reasonable amount of current regardless of what's going on so just i think the problem with the bloody bikes that's like 20 quid wasted on a battery um still at least we've got something for experiments i suppose but bloody annoying 